Hello students, today we have a very wonderful play on the face of it to discuss and it's written by Sushan Hill and this is a play about an old man and a small boy's meeting in the old man's garden. The boy happens to be quite withdrawn and old man tries to uplift his morale and boost his confidence in himself through this short meeting and try to find what happened after the meeting does it meeting bring a lifelong change in the boy or not this is the thing that you will find and consider after this play so let's start this play on face of it by sushan hill so this is a play and it has three scenes First, Mr. Lamb's garden, and second, Daddy's house, and third, Mr. Lamb's garden once again. For our convenience of understanding, we have simply converted this entire long play into 30 lines. These 30 lines are, we can say, summarized notes, brief notes, through which we can entirely keep the full play in our mind and it's quite easy that you also have these lines uh, remembered so the play starts from Mr. Lamb's garden and when it starts you find that Derry is uh, in Mr. Lamb's garden and we listen to Mr. Lamb warning Derry that there are some apples fallen on the grounds and Derry could trip so he warns him that be careful of those fallen apples. You, you could trip. But Derry gets worried. And he didn't expect that someone was in the garden. And Derry worried about being blamed for stealing. He got worried. But Mr. Lamb tries to soothe him. He says, What are you worried for? If I'm here, don't be afraid of me. It's quite em empty since Derry has said that uh, he had thought the house to be empty. So, Mr. Lamb repeated the same that the house is empty since I'm out here. But Derry once again expresses his worry that I need to go. But Mr. Lamb once again tries to calm him that not on my account, don't go on my account. I don't mind who comes into the garden, gates always open for everyone, but see the withdrawn kind of nature of Derry since he says that he is not come there for stealing. However, Mr. Lamb hadn't just blamed anything on Derry nor had he shown any signs of doing so, but still see how withdrawn and uh, defiant was the nature of the child that he himself uh, uh, started thinking that he would be blamed for stealing something but Mr. Lamb tries to calm him. No, no, that's not a matter. Uh, young boys uh, who are too young, they come for stealing but you are not so young. And uh, still, however, Mr. Lamb had not asked for any kind of explanation. Derry himself starts giving explanation that he wanted just to come into the garden. Mr. Lamb says, so you have come. It's not a matter of getting worried. Then Derry, out of his negative approach, negative attitude to life, he says, you don't know who I am. But Mr. Lamb says, you are simply a boy, 13 or so. But Derry says, I got to go now. Mr. Lamb says, Why are you afraid of me? Derry says, I am not afraid, but people get afraid of me. Mr. Lamb asks, Why? Why should anyone, anyone get afraid of you? Derry says, Every time, whoever sees me, whenever they look at me, and doesn't matter how they try to pretend but I can see that they get afraid then Mr. Lamb asks 
why they got fret there is an star explaining that uh, even i can see you are too getting a fret because you first look at me then you look at my face and then you think that's bad that's a terrible thing the ugliest thing uh, i've ever seen then you start thinking i'm a poor boy but i'm not and i can see underneath you getting a fret of me and i myself also get fret when i look into the mirror then mr lem once again tries to calm him down he says it's not a matter to get a fret then suddenly mr lem changes the topic he uh, starts talking about the crab apples to make some jelly out of them when they get ripe and then again very get excited and he asks a question why have you changed the topic and then mr lem gets a bit straight and uh, asks do you want me to ask the same thing the people say then terry says he doesn't like being with people mr lem then says i can understand that your face might have got burnt in fire but there terry says not in fire but acid fell down there and that burnt my face up and finally it had burnt me up and it won't get any change it will remain like this forever then miss lamb doesn't show much interest in the story then dairy asks aren't you interested then mr lamb starts expressing his approach to life his attitude to life and he says i am interested in everything god has created he asks from dairy what he could see there out he signals somewhere then dairy answered he could see rubbish but mr lamb says some fine rubbish just beyond rubbish there is grass and stuff wheat but miss lam says some call them weeds some call them wheat garden there are fruits flowers trees a lot of other plants but ultimately if we see Miss Lam explains the all our lives where is the difference a growing plant all growing plants are lives whether it's be weed fruit or some other kind of plant then dairy says but we are not same then Miss Lam explains yeah you are a boy you are young i am old you got burnt face and i have thin leg then we are same where's the difference then dairy gets a little bit change in his attitude and he get takes interest in mr lam and asks a few question do you got a thin leg then mr lam say yeah then dairy asks why then mr lam explains that a real one got blown off in bomb blast and people call me lemmy lamb but i don't ever mind then mr lamb says there are a lot of other things to to stare at then dairy points like my face but then mr lamb keeps the topic changed and then move the course of conversation towards the fairy tale tale but dairy then himself starts telling the tale that yeah i know the tale that once uh, beauty kissed the beast and that changed entirely but dairy says that my face won't ever get changed then mr lamb asks dairy a question okay no one would kiss you as you say but don't you ever mind if
you won't kiss anyone and do you care if you happen to kiss no one then dairy say what miss lamb says that what if he gets to kiss the girls pretty girls girls with large eyes and people you love but dairy refuses reject the idea saying who would let me kiss and mr lamb ends this point to saying a very logical question who can tell means nobody can assume whether someone will let you kiss or not it's ultimately a matter of future and no one can say anything firm about this and then the <coughs> course of conversation takes towards mr lamb stain leg and dairy asks a question about tin leg and he says he asks whether the tin leg hurts or not then miss lamb gives some brief answer he says tin doesn't hurt and uh, it hurts a little bit when in uh, winter or weather changes but it doesn't matter then again dairy starts talking about his parents he says i listen to my parents dairy tells miss lamb that his parents uh, would always advise him that uh, uh, i must look at the other people who are in pain and brave and never cry and never complain and don't ever feel sorry for themselves means dairy tells mr lamb that my parent advised me saying i should keep myself up thinking about other people who are still in pain and don't ever complain whose conditions are worse than me and dairy again tells uh, mr lamb that my parents also advise that uh, you might have been worse than you are now you might have been blinded born deaf or some other painful disease you might have underwent then mr lamb says that's all true and you know it but still there he was not convinced and he says that but it hurts when people talk about me he tells a story that once uh, a woman was uh, going uh, in the street and uh, he was standing by and uh, they there were actually two women and they were passing and talking with each other and one of them said that's a face only a mother could love and it was too hurting but then mr lamb once again advises a child saying that don't believe what you listen to and better you keep your ears shut and listening to this remark dairy gets surprised and he says that you are strange kind of person you say peculiar things and mr lamb admits that uh, they seem peculiar to someone and they seem meaningful to others and then they have a little bit talk over the bees and uh, about bees mr lamb says bees but but if we listen to the buzzing we quite interest we will find something humming and humming means singing so i listen to the bees singing and then dairy dairies gets willing to listen to bees singing he too gets interested in uh, 
staying in the garden he takes in trust and he says that i like it here but again dairy says i don't like being near people because they stare and when i see them being afraid of me it hurts then mr lamb tells him one story he tells him a story of a man who had locked himself in <coughs> mr lamb says that there was one person who had locked himself in a room because he was afraid of everything he was afraid that if he get out a bus might run over him or a man bridge deadly jump onto him or donkey might kick him to death or some lightning might strike him down or he even feared he might fall in love with a girl and girl will leave him and then he might die in her pain and he was afraid that he might slip on banana skin and fall and and then would die so that's why he locked himself up into a room then they asked the question forever forever he kept himself locked inside the room but miss lamb said no not forever but for a while dairy once again asked the question then what happened then then miss lamb told a picture inside the room fell off the wall and it fell on his head and he got kill then dairy laughed a lot listening to the story and uh, after having a good laugh dairy says you are still peculiar you say peculiar things and mr lamb say yeah they seem peculiar to some then dairy asks questions he take some interest in mr lamb and ask a question what do you do all the day then mr lamb tells that uh, there are a lot of books inside and i read a lot of books sometimes i sit inside and sometimes i sit outside and uh, then the course of conversation once again uh, goes to terry's parents and terry tells mr lamb about his parents that his parents think what will he ever do what will happen with him how will he get in this world taking this all over his face dairy tells mr lamb about his parents worries uh, about dairy then mr lamb once again boost up his morale saying that boy you have got to arms to legs eyes ears and you have fine brain you'll get on the way as you want even if you set your mind you might do a lot better than all the rest dairy asks the question how then mr lamb answers the same way as i do i've learned a lot of things next day ask the questions uh, from mr lamb do you have any friends mr lamb answers a hundreds of friends <coughs> mr lamb says a lot of people come a lot of boys come gate always remain open and so have you come but dairy says i am not your friend mr lamb says why aren't you my friend dairy says you don't know me you don't know even where i have come from or what is my name then mr lamb puts a very logical and witty questions uh, to dairy he says does anybody need to put all bio data all detail in a diary before two persons to uh, 
टू पर्सन बिकम फ्रेंड देन डेरी सेस आई गेस नो एंड मिस्टर लैम कंटिन्यूज इज सेज यू को टेल मी माई ने टेल मी योर नेम इफ यू विश अदरवाइज स्टिल वी आर फ्रेंड बट डेरी सेस my name is dari it's darak and he says if i am your friend you don't have to be mine mr lam says why not then dari wants i might never come here again and you might never see me again then we can't be friends any longer then mr lam says why won't be friends then then next dairy explains a lot of people come and we pass by them in streets and we happen to talk sometimes to them that doesn't make them friends and mr lam and mr lam says doesn't mean all together they are enemies and dari says no they are just people that's all but miss lam says people are never just nothing or just people then dari changes the course of conversation he takes the talk to his personal point of view about people he says there are some people he hates then mr lam warns him saying uh, it is worse than any acid acid only burns your face and uh, you might burn from inside if you would hate people that would do much more harm than acid but when dairy listened that he used the word only before burning face he gets a bit angry and he in a angry tone he said only then miss lam say uh, convinces him by adding only with his leg to he says like a bomb only blew up my leg and he then warns that if you would hate people you might burn yourself from inside then dari starts to, uh, starts talking about the world he says that uh, this world is not good uh, he says uh, that there should be some division of the world that all people who were born face should stay at one part of the world and all blind should stay at the other part of the world and so on with all different kinds of ailments at different parts of the world then mr lam asked question from dari then which kind of the world that be dari said then at least there won't be anyone to stare other then mr lam say why should we say that some particular people are same just by how they look or what sort of ailment the same kind of ailment they are going through should we say those old person with having same sort of ailment are same then dari once again gets to thinking and he asks mr lam a question that how do you make out these all things and uh, then mr lam answers that i just watch listen and think then they talk about the garden he dairy says that i 
like this garden and I want to want to visit once again and uh, at the same time he gets worried about the other friends of Mr. Lamb. He says uh, if we start visiting this garden then other friends of Mr. Lamb might uh, find it uh, quite objectionable and they might quit visiting Mr. Lamb. Then Mr. Lamb says uh, you might have to take the risk they may quit they might not quit then miss lamb says uh, i would need core to get some crab apples uh, and uh, you could help me then Derry says he would love helping him but at the same moment he says uh, his mother might be getting worried uh, as to where i am and uh, he said that he would come back and he must go inform to his mother and then would come back then mr lamb says boy you have got good legs you might run to your mother and get back but it was for the first moment that he got negative and he miss lamb gives a negative remark saying that people once go they don't return and here Derry shouts up uh, saying you don't know me who I am then Mr. Lamb once again covers the things up saying uh, yeah I don't know you know yourself better and then Derry start speaking up on Mr. Lamb about his friends too and he uh, comments that I don't think you have a lot of friends even he asks tell me uh, what are their names and then Mr. Lamb counts of a name and then he says it's better to get silence and get to uh, work uh, than to argue then Mr. Lamb counts of a name and then he goes to work of uh, taking down the crab apples sorry to bees not to crab apples it's to bees then Derry further blames him saying I don't think you have any friends and uh, even nobody cares if you are alive or dead you are a daft, you are a crazy person. Then again, Mr. Lamb gives a sharp comment asking this your excuse not to come back. Like other people have excuse that you have a burnt face, so it's your excuse not to come back. Then once again, Derry gets angry listening to this uh, sharp comment uh, and again blames Terry that you are like other people's you also won't comment that I look like a devil I had a bad face and if you don't like to say then you are frightened but this time Miss Lamb doesn't answer and he goes to his peace as silence sometimes speaks more then again Derry says no you are not like other I'd come back to you but I would go to my mother first and here at for the first time in the story Mr. Lamb speaks of seclusion loneliness he says there my dears that's you seem to uh, you know we all know I'll come back they never do though not them never do come back means people say they would come but they don't come back this is for the first time there's some uh, feeling of aloofness feeling of loneliness feeling of seclusion is seen in Mr. Lamb but uh, Derry has gone by now. So next is a scene two and it's Derry's house. 
and next the scene to opens and it's uh, Derry's house and we get an idea of what has gone before from a uh, mother's uh, scolding to Derry. In the opening line of the second scene, we find that Derry's mother is scolding Derry for having gone there. And we get an idea that Derry has told his mother all about Mr. Lamb and uh, listening to this all, his mother starts scolding him. She says, you think I don't know about him? I know him and I have heard a lot of things and Derry because he has uh, learnt a lot of things from Mr. Lamb and he says you shouldn't believe on what you all hear. Then Derry says, uh, that uh, he would go back to him but uh, when his mother stops him then once again Derry repeats Mr. Lamb's dialogue uh, saying what are you afraid of? What do you think he is? He's uh, simply an old man with ten lakh and he lives in a good house and that's all. Then he says that I wanna listen him. I wanna listen him talking. I wanna listen to the songs of bees. Then his mother asks what he's got to say to you. Then Derry says that he has uh, said me so many things that no one else has said. And I would listen those all the things when I'll get back to him. And he says, I will then think all about those things which he would say. Then Derry's mother says, then stay here and do your thinking. Derry gets angry and says, I hate it here. Then Derry says, if he won't get him there, he won't get anywhere in the world and I would help him with crab apples and his mother stops him that you won't go anywhere but Derry says no I must go there I'll never then go anywhere in the world if I won't go there then uh, Derry runs leaving behind his mother and then starts scene third it is very brief and it's again in Mr. Lamb's garden. Derry enters through gate shouting, See, Mr. Lamb, see, Lammy Lamb, you said I won't come, but see, I'll come. Derry listens to some sound. Mr. Lamb was uh, picking up some apples, some apples fall and then sound of some creak and ladder fall is listened and Mr. Lamb falls with the ladder with a thump sound and then everything gets silent. Since Derry was coming into the garden shouting I come he didn't notice but soon he gets close where Mr. Lamb was and he discovers Mr. Lamb had fallen. He again shouts, see Lammy Lamb, I've come back, Mr. Lamb, I've come back. But finally, Derry starts crying. And Derry's final cry means that Mr. Lamb, having fallen with the ladder, picking up crab apples have died he has passed away having fallen with the ladder while picking the crab apples and that's the end of the play and that was all about the play and I hope you must have understood it well I request you all please like and share the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and thanks for watching.